inertia of a body depends on mass we can also say that inertia is the quantity which describes mass or it is the quantity to measure mass inertia can be of three types inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction now what is inertia of motion by definition we can say it is an inherent property of the body by the virtue of which the body stays or continues to stays at the in the uh, state of rest for example we can explain that with the help of examples first example we can take um, while dusting a carpet when we have to dust a carpet we just move the carpet upside down what happens exactly in that case we are moving the carpet at the same time the dust particles which are stuck to the carpet they remain in the state of rest because of the inertia into it so those particle of dust which remain in the state of rest remain in the same position whereas when we move the carpet they uh, get detached from the carpet and they fall down this is the way how inertia of rest works the second example that we can see is uh, in case of a star uh, in case of a bus when we are standing in the bus we are in the state of rest even the bus is in the state of rest when at the same time when uh, the bus starts suddenly what happens when the bus starts suddenly our body will experience a jerk because of that why it happens why that jerk is happening because the our body which is at rest continues to stay in the state of rest whereas when the bus starts moving the lower body lower part of the body starts moving along with the bus and the upper part of the body again still is in the state of rest because of which we experiences a backward jerk and even sometimes we may fall if it is at very high speed um another example we can uh, use we use in the gardens while uh, we are plucking or we are removing fruits from the tree what we exactly do we shake the branches what happens due to that when we shake the branches the trees because of the inertia into it they remain in the state of rest while the branches are moving because of that the trees uh, the fruits gets detached from the branches and they fall down this is how inertia of rest works the second property is inertia of motion now how it works inertia of motion what is inertia of motion it is the inherent property by the virtue of which a body continues to stay in the state of rest how can we explain that a body which is in motion it continues to stay in the state uh, in the state of motion unless and until it is acted upon by another force so that property of the body to stay in the state of motion is called as inertia how do we explain that with the help of examples first example we can say whenever we are uh, suppose we are standing in a moving bus the bus is moving when the driver applies a sudden brake to the bus to stop what happens because of the moving bus our body our complete body was in the state of motion but as soon as the brakes are applied the bus stops because of which the lower part of the body comes to rest while the upper part is still in motion because of the whole situation our body uh, our body experiences a jerk this is how a person may fall in the moving bus when sudden brakes are applied
when the fan is switched off, it still continues to rotate till some time. This happens because of the inertia of motion of the fan. It continues to rotate. Uh, third example: a person falls from the uh, but falls. A person may fall from the uh, train when he tries to jump out of the moving train. Now, why this thing happens? Whenever a person is in the moving train, he is also in the state of motion along with the train. When he tries to jump off, he tries to land on the stationary ground. The sta when as soon as the motion, as soon as the legs which are in motion along with the train lands on the stationary ground, it uh, it gets changed. It uh, it gets converted into the state of rest. Because of which the person may fall. Next is inertia of direction. Inertia of direction is the inherent property uh, by the virtue of which a person or an object continues to stay in the same direction unless and until it is acted upon by an external unbalanced force. The example that we can see to understand what it means is very first, uh, whenever we are riding a car or bike. The mud that is uh, that is getting stuck to the tires because of the rotation motion of the tire, the mud gets uh, moves out of the tire in the tangential way. This is the change in the direction because of the force, circular force. Another example we can say the sharpening of knife. Uh, due to the circular motion of the wheel of the sharpener of the knife, we can see something, some spark coming out in the tangential way. That spark is due to the change in the direction due to circular motion of the wheel. This is how we can explain inertia. Inertia, we explained three types of inertia which was inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. So inertia of motion, it helps a body to continue to stay in the state of rest inertia of motion it helps a body to continue in the state of motion whereas inertia of direction means uh, it is the tendency of a body to continue in the state in the same direction these definitions were given by mr S uh, isaac newton and he uh, very beautifully designed or stated the law his first law of motion, which we call as Newton's first law of motion. He stated that uh, a body continues to stay in the state of rest if it is in rest or it continues to stay in the state of motion if it is in motion in the same direction unless and until it is acted upon by an external unbalanced force. Now, if we talk about force, we can describe force with the two things that is first is magnitude as well as the direction. So we can say force is a vector quantity. Similarly, in the second law of Newton that he uh, gave, uh, it consists of some force part and a new quantity which is known as momentum. Now force, whenever force comes in picture, we think about mass and velocity. Mass and velocity of an object can change the motion of an object. So momentum he described, he defined momentum as a body in with velocity. A mass with velocity is equal to momentum. Mathematically we, we can define it as, it is the product of mass and velocity. We denote it with P, momentum as P, and we write it as M multiplied by V. Newton then explained his third law. In the third law, he gave the reaction and action between the force and the interactive bodies. In this, uh, in this law, he stated that for every action, there is an equal and opposite direction, which means Whenever an action is done, it has some or the other reaction in the opposite direction. For example, we can say, Forces never appear singly. They always appear in a pair. For example, if we strike a bat 
if we strike a ball with a bat, we apply some amount of force on the ball using the bat. Same amount of force will be applied by the ball on the bat because of which the cricketer may experience a jerk in the hand. The same, in the same way, we can also see another example uh, while shooting with a gun. While shooting with a gun, a force with a force is applied to the bullet so that it, it goes in the further direction. The same amount of force the bullet also applies on the gun because of which the shooter experiences a jerk in his hand and the gun moves back. The third example that we can see is third example we can see is a rocket. Whenever we have to launch a rocket in the upward direction, the down portion of the rocket which consists of fuel is ignited. Because of the chemical reaction in the bottom part of the rocket, it gets ignited and because of that, it moves in the upward direction with a great force. These were the three examples to explain the uh, third law given by Newton which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now further we can talk about principle of conservation of momentum. Now what do you mean by the term conservation? Conservation means something which cannot be destroyed, neither uh, it can be made or um, neither it can be made. The amount or the quantity remains same everywhere. So when we talk about momentum, conservation of momentum, we are talking about that we are saying that momentum cannot be destroyed and the amount of mass and the force applied and the velocity with which it is moving remains the same.
in a high jump an athlete always takes a run before jumping why does he do that and why do you think which law of newton applies here with which with the help of which law does the athlete does this this is because of both the laws second and third as the second law states that a body continues to stay in the state of rest and in the state of motion if it is in motion unless and until it is acted upon by an external force whenever an athlete has to jump it has to put a lot of force on his legs when if suppose he doesn't run and he jumps directly that means his legs are at the state of rest and when it jumps it suddenly starts in the state of motion when it comes back because of the third law of motion that is every action has equal and opposite reaction the because of the reaction of the ground it uh, the athlete may injure his leg because of that the athlete has to run and set his body his legs in motion before taking a long jump just to avoid the injuries so this is how uh, the laws of newton the laws of motion given by newton help us in the day to day life now another example we can say uh, you tell me which of the following will have more inertia into it a rubber ball or a stone if both are of the same size which of them will have more inertia a stone will have more inertia why because inertia of a body depends on the mass of the body more the mass of the body more will be the inertia another example to explain is uh, we can take a train or a bicycle a train has more inertia than a bicycle now tell me friends why do you think we are suggested to tie up our luggages if we have we are keeping it on the roof of the train it is because of the second law of inertia a uh, second law of motion which states that uh, because of that second law of motion the luggage may fall down because it is in motion with the train if suddenly if the train stops the luggage may fall down so in this way the uh, laws of motion can be helpful to us in many ways in the life let us continue with the explanation of second law of motion given by newton we can say that rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the impressed force and it takes place in the direction of the force mathematically we can write it as the rate of change of momentum which is change of momentum with respect to time suppose m is the mass of the of, uh, of the object v is the final velocity and u is the initial velocity therefore m in common v minus u divided by t now here v minus u by t is equal to acceleration as per the definition we can say that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force the unit of measurement of force is newton one newton is equal to the force applied to move 1 kg to, one, uh, to with an acceleration of 1 m per second square so one newton is equal to 1 kg 
per centimeter or meter per second square. So this is the definition of one neutron. One neutron is also equal to 10 raised to 5 dimes. Where neutron is the SI unit of force and dyne is the CGS unit of measurement of force. Now to understand the concept of conservation of momentum, we consider two bodies of mass M1 and M2. Suppose Newton. 
we have to find the acceleration so we will use the formula of force which is equal to mass into acceleration substituting the values 350 is equal to 500 into a a will be equal to 350 divided by 500 we get the acceleration of 0 0.7 meter per second so proceeding with the next sum, we have to calculate the momentum of the gun which has the mass 500 kg and it recoils after getting fired with a velocity of 0 0.25 meter per second. So first we will write the given data when mass is equal to 500 kg and velocity is 0 0.25 meter per second. We have to find momentum. So, the formula for momentum is mv, where m is the mass and v is the velocity. Substituting the values, 500 multiplied by 0 0.25, we get momentum is equal to 125 kg meter per second so this is the answer we have found for a gun of mass 500 kg which recoils with a speed of 0.25 meter per second the momentum will be 125 kg meter per second so our third question is we have a railway wagon which is moving the railway wagon is having mass 2500 and it is moving with a speed of 36 km per hour. It collides with a stationary wagon which is, which is of mass 3000 kg. When after collision, if it moves with the same velocity, we have to calculate the common velocities. So we will first note down the given data. M1, which is the mass of the moving wagon, is 2500 kg. M2, mass of the stationary wagon, is 3000 kgs. U1, which is the velocity of the moving wagon, is 36 km per hour. We'll just convert it into meter per second. So 36 multiplied by 1000 divided by 60 into 60. we get 10 meter per second. U2 is the velocity of the stationary wagon which is zero because it is stationary. Now we apply the formula which is we have to find the final velocity of the boat that is V1 and V2 which will be the same. So we have to find V1 which is equal to V2 so we take it as V. So M1 V1 minus M2 M1 V1 minus M2 U2 equals to M1 V1 minus M2 V2. Here substituting the values we get 2500 multiplied by 10 minus 3000 multiplied by 0 equals to again 2500 V minus 3000 V. minus 0 and this side will be getting V as common 2500 
थ्री डिवाइड बाय माइनस जीरो पॉइंट वन टू फाइव द होल डिवाइडेड बाय जीरो पॉइंट वन सो बी टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू इफ वी डू द कैलकुलेशन थ्री जीरो जीरो पॉइंट वन टू फाइव Divide by 0.1. B2 will be 0.0285 meter per second. This is the final velocity of the second ball. So we do the calculations. B2 is equal to 0.300 minus 0.125. We get five seven one. So the answer is zero point one seven five divided by zero point one. So V two is one point seven five meter per second. This is the velocity with which the second ball starts moving. So this was all about Newton's laws of motion and we covered all the three laws of motion with the numericals. Thank you for watching study spectrum. Goodbye.